after I found that I uh, repaired the bass control that was working correctly, I also found that um, despite the treble sounding and mid-range sounding like they were working okay, they were only working right on one channel, so all these sliders had uh, sort of had a, got problems with them. Um, so I've stripped them all down, uh, I've cleaned the contacts up, I've re-glued the, the, like the, the fingers to the slider itself, um, bent the contacts up, and now I've got working bass and treble on uh, both channels. Um, and you can really hear on this with this internal microphone, but let's have a listen. This is the bass control. It's the mid-range. Minimum. It's working. Treble. Minimum. Working fine. So let's put that to to rest. Now, uh, what was happening on the circuit, by the looks of it, is uh, what was the largest circuit. To, let me explain my thinking on what's happened here. We know that this op amp, and these two op amps, these pair have failed, and they fail because they've had DC or basically no control over their uh, non-inverting input, or sorry, inverting input, which is the pin six and pin three, respectively, to left and right. This pot had gone open circuit, this slider position here and the slider position here was open which allowed the, um, the, the top track, here, well let me show you, this, this link here to be only capacitor coupled so there was no way that um, that pin 2 was tied to ground. This resistor went back to this slider but this slider was open, it was tied between two capacitors itself so all that happens is that zero volt which is what happens with op amps, they're not tied down that started to climb. That pushed the output DC. That's why we're getting DC to the speakers. And sooner or later, it just pushed all the amplifier uh, transistors probably into saturation and all the it turned all the other amplifiers off. That's hence the distortion and loss of output. So if you've got one of these amplifiers that sort of produces a lot of distorted sound, check your uh, tone controls. Um, that they go open circuit. Now there is a sort of like a, there could be a fix if we couldn't repair this uh, tone control circuit. The other option is to basically bypass the tone control circuit altogether. Um, what I would have done was taken the output of here and fed it straight into the input of here, um, and probably had to experiment with a couple of resistors to try and get the sort of sound balanced out. But I could basically, if the amplifier, if the pots have failed totally, they've been damaged or broken you could basically bypass this circuit without any problem at all. I didn't want to do that. I don't like tone controls and amplifiers. I'm one of these minimalist uh, people who don't believe if it's, an, if it's a high fidelity amplifier it should do exactly what it, what it says on the, on the book. It should be if it's hot. The signal going in should be exactly the same as it is coming out. Anyway, that's a different story. The other option here, of course, is because the input here is fairly low impedance, like 100k, something like that, what I could do is put a 1 meg resistor between pin 2 and pin 3, both these op amps, and I think that would probably be enough to prevent the, them sliding apart and pushing this output positive or negative, whichever way it wants to go. So that would be a sort of like a fail-safe um, issue. So if the resistor became faulty again, the audio would continue. We wouldn't get that high DC offset on the output stage. Um, there's another. There are a number of other ways of doing this because this is a direct coupled amplifier. Um, we want. I want to try and keep it direct coupled. I could put a series capacitor on the output, or put an, a series capacitor here, maybe you know, only a small capacitor, or maybe one on the output, and possibly even one on the input to prevent that happening again. But anyway, we fixed the pots. That's working. Um, I think the next thing to do is to uh, get the get the pots back on, get the amplifier all folded up, uh, and then we'll run it through the uh, 8562A again as uh, audio analyzer and see if we get a flatter response. Right, I'm going to do a frequency response check. The amplifier's back together uh, and it's ready to go. Really, uh, I've just still got the top off it and. But everything's okay. The tone controls all been rebuilt. It all seems to be working fine. I'm going to do a sweep on it now just to see what our overall frequency response is. It will give me a good idea if the tone controls are actually sort of working properly. Make sure they're not sort of stuck high or stuck low or anything like that. Let's start the sweep. Starting from 10 hertz. 
um, more to just get the resolution to spread the um, the uh, graph out a bit so we've got a more idea of what the amplifier is doing. got a very slight uh, low frequency hump you see here. This roll off here is a subsonic filtering of basically blocking any DC. Uh, you don't want anything below really 10 hertz getting through the amplifier anyway. It's starting to recover a bit. Now we've got on the bottom scale is the right hand channel, uh, top, top scale is the left. What I'm interested in seeing is how well these tone controls are um, tracking each other really, just seeing how flat the response is. And it looks pretty good actually. I'm just moving my marker along to see how flat the response is. It's actually quite responsive this uh, DSA when it's running, despite it's uh, doing quite a lot of math. It's uh, uses the Motorola 6800 or 68000 processor used in the Amiga A500 uh, and in its day it was quite a, quite a well spec processor it's probably only running about 7 megs though so there we go so let's see our, our peak here is 8.09 dBm dBv sorry and here we'll drop for 7.8 so very very slight uh, mid-range fall off. What I'll do is I'm going to run it through again just to see how the, see the turn controls are working correctly. I'm going to give it a, one click on the mid-range to try and bring this mid-range up slightly. So I'm going to go up one click now and run it through again. Just leave our marker there and see what we get. Now of course we lose the mark when it starts. So I'm expecting less of a dip in the middle now. See, that's a bit better already, actually. I suppose it is and it isn't, you know, with the mid-range down a bit, it's got less of a top-end roller. It swings and roundabouts with these sort of amplifiers, but it's that's a pretty good response. I'm very pleased with that. So it's clearly everything's working how it as it should um, I think really that sort of wraps up this Marantz PM350 so I've enjoyed working on this it's been an unusual fault I've never come across a, uh, a preamp fire fault quite like this and I didn't think tone controls could cause so much of a problem um, and it's been a good test also to uh, put the uh, HP 3562 through as well so uh, Let's go back to the amplifier and see what the finished product looks like. It's back together again. Uh, it really is in excellent condition actually. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I need to blow all the dust out. I'll do that at work tomorrow with the airline. I can't be bothered to get the ga garage open and it's freezing cold outside. I don't think I'm digging out the airline. Um, no marks on it at all actually. It's in really good condition. 
Um, so that's the final result uh, of perfectly working Marantz PM350. Uh, so basically, sums up was uh, damaged op amp that took the uh, fusible resistors out, um, and then open circuit pots, uh, open circuit base control, resulting in high offset on the uh, input of the op amp, which basically pushed all the amplifier DC, it was causing all sorts of instability problems and. Uh, Transistors being turned on when they shouldn't be, and transistors being turned off when they shouldn't be. That's various, various upsets on the input basically. Um, and the, the mid and treble controls were only working on one channel. Apart from that, everything seems to be okay, and it sounds uh, it sounds pretty good really. Um, they were they were renowned to being a, quite a good amplifier. They got quite a good review in their day. Um, so uh, that's the Marantz PM three hundred and fifty. So if you like this video, um, as all the others say, give it a thumbs up, I uh, appreciate that, and uh, thanks for watching.